I'm Michael Jordan with AB Friendly Company, and welcome once again down to the Underground Meadery. Hey, we're finishing up the month of January. So, here at the end of the month, we're going to do a regular mead, identically the same, and now we're going to add a nutrient to it. Nutrients help the yeast uh, digest the sugars faster, makes them breed faster, helps with the fermentation process. And there are all kinds of nutrients out there. Uh, I'm going to show you two different kinds that we use. One is Fermit K, and one is Fermit O, and then there's just Fermit that we use. Uh, sometimes we mix a little bit of the yeast uh, nutrients with pollen to give it some boost. Uh, you've seen earlier that we did an open fermentation using pollen, and within two weeks we're already starting to get activation. So. We're just going to show you right now that I've already got them already done, uh, prepping and stuff always at the beginning so the videos don't take as long. But what we've done is the same method for everything that we're doing, is this has three pounds of honey, three pounds of honey. Now remember, depending on the honey it is, how it's crystallized, what types of honey you have, the starting gravity will be different, but the measurements are the same. Three pounds of honey, three pounds of honey. We've used our coffee pot method of warming up a uh, reverse osmosis well water that we use. That way it has no chlorine, no fluorides, nothing in it. It's a good base. I think that if you, if you find a good water that you're going to use, use it every time. We have two good sources. We use the osmosis water and then we have a natural spring water from a retreat that we harvest. So. Three pounds of honey, a gallon of water, and we're going to add the yeast to it and the nutrients. So this one we will not add a nutrient to, and this one we're going to add a nutrient to. So if they're done at the same time, the exact same recipe, you're going to be able to compare what the nutrients do. If you want to get even more technical, make about six batches, all the same. Try Fermit, try Fermit O, Fermit K, Nutrex. Uh, just straight pollen and, and try to do a variable. You can do your own study of the different types of yeast nutrients, which ones you like the best, which ones are working the best for some of your recipes. And I think this will help you out quite a bit on uh, what you're looking to do. So we have this one right here. It's all ready to have the gravity's taken, the temperature's taken. I've already taken the temperatures. They're at 72 degrees. That way we could go ahead and start adding the yeast and the nutrients. But let's go ahead and check to see how our starting gravities are between each one and how they work. So you always get your little tube. We're going to just pour a little bit in the tube. A little more than halfway. We're going to get out a hydrometer, put it in, give it a little spin. Stick to the side here a little bit. That's one. So, this starting gravity here is at 1070. So we'll just go ahead and write that down. 1070. That's 1.070. We'll see what the finishing gravity is on that when we get going. Remember you should have a rag something wet. And just kind of rinse off my hydrometer so we don't get a false reading on the next one. We'll pull her this back in. Now, you've seen us use the balloon method. We're going to go ahead and use airlocks this time to show you what the airlocks look like and what they do. I've already prepped the airlocks. The uh, yeast we're using is K1-V1116 by Levin, right, that it's a, we, we're just going to do a dump, we're not going to do a starter base, as we get into the more advanced you'll see us do 
nutrients adding, starter bases, pollens, and all kinds of stuff. But uh, this one we're just going to do a dump and pour. So we're just going to pour the yeast directly in. I'm going to put my hand on it and just give it a little tossle to get the yeast kind of mixed up inside. And we're going to use a bubbler unit. This bubbler unit you can see is full on one side. When we push the pressure on, the pressure will even out the two sides of the bubbler unit. And you'll be able to see the two. As the fermentation goes, it'll put pressure on it, evening it out, and it'll bubble. You can put a hose on top of it, stick it in a bucket for blow off, things of this nature. But we're just going to go ahead and add this directly in. And you can see they evened out evenly on both sides. Over the next uh, 48 hours, the pressure will come from the CO discharge. The yeast is eating the sugar, belching out CO2, and basically urinating out alcohol. So the bubble unit will start going when the CO2 builds. Now this one is a clover mead, three pounds of clover honey, the filtered reverse osmosis of the water, one pack of the Leviathan K1, V1116 and we've got our starting gravity at 72 degrees and our date. So that's the recipe. It's all set. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a specific gravity reading of this one. Made the same identical way. Hopefully they're, they come out pretty close on the hydrometer. Take our hydrometer, drop it in. Yeah, pretty good. One zero six zero. So they're about tenth off. Pretty pretty close. Pretty good mix right there. We got our pin. Starting gravity. One point zero six zero for our starting gravity. Take my hydrometer out, rinse it off. Uh, one good thing to always have is like spare pitcher of water, clean up availability, clean your equipment off. Hydrometer, candy thermometer, took the readings from the thermometer, took the readings with the hydrometer. Right, we're going to stick the hydrometer reading back in the tube, back into the jar. We'll rinse and wash that out. Now, before I add the same identical yeast right to it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dump Fermid K in. So we're going to use one tablespoon a Fermid K. So this one had no yeast nutrient, this one we're using a Fermid K yeast nutrient. We're going to tell the difference in fermentation, alcohol content, this will be a pretty good judge. So we've added the yeast nutrient to it. Now remember you can expand this test out more than we did using way more different yeast nutrients to find out works best for you. Now remember brewing has to do with bread making, altitude, climate, temperature, humidity, all those play a part when it comes to the yeast activation. So it's going to be different every location that you do. So these are some good tests that you can do. We're going to use the exact same yeast as before and doing identical. So this was so we could do a yeast nutrient comparison, just to see what we what we can do. Give it a little jostle. Get the yeast nutrient falling. Get the yeast falling in it. This is another type of bubbler unit. 
you can see it's already filled to the marker with water. What happens is as this builds pressure, there's a little bubble unit inside here. And it'll push up, blowing the air out. Push up, blowing the air out. So it actually looks like a little piston going chuk -chuk 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 -chuk. Right, so when this starts going, we'll be able to see the piston go up and this one will bubble. Same as always, you can put a tube on it. These caps have little holes in it to let the breathe go out. But it's made so the piston doesn't just shoot out. That's why it has a cap on it. We'll put this one on top. Now, we have made two identical meads. You've got to see the introduction of two different types of airlock units and an introduction of a nutrient. This is going to be a test recording that we'll be able to do. Same date, same temperatures, about the same specific gravities. And this will be our, our nutrient test. Thanks for tuning in to the Underground Meadery. I'm Michael Jordan. And as always, drink a good mead. This right here is a phantom white chocolate that we've made with Belgian white chocolate. It's a little thicker than most. It's really good for a holiday festive season. This is what we're finishing off from over Christmas. We would add a little, maybe you could add some peppermint schnapps to it. Uh, add a little bit and make it almost like an eggnog. But it's a white Belgian chocolate. Thanks for tuning in.